Welcome back. You are watching Digital Trends, live coverage of CES 2018 right here in Las Vegas. And you are watching live on, I'm going to say Facebook and YouTube, which is pretty cool. Facebook's going to be doing individual videos and YouTube has the whole day broadcast for you. So if you've missed anything, you can check it all out. And we've got the whole schedule available for you if you look at the description and on Facebook as well. Right now though, we're going to talk computers. So to help me out with that, we've got the senior editor from Digital Trends, Matt Smith. Thanks for coming back. How's it going? Good. Processor talk is happening now with AMD. And to talk about the latest here at CES, we've got Mark Papermaster, who is the, the Chief Technology Officer and Senior Vice President of Technology and Engineering of AMD. That sounds like such an impressive <laughs> title. What is it exactly that you're doing with AMD? So Mark, with AMD, my role is, uh, is running technology. And what we're about at AMD is really creating the engines that you know, sit underneath the covers of your day-to-day -day use of from personal computing, gaming devices, game consoles, to computers that are behind the walls, uh, up in the cloud, uh, powering you know, many of the functions that you use day-to-day. -day. So Mark, I wanted to talk to you about, you, know, you, you just mentioned all those different devices that your processors go in. Mm -hmm. Something very serious that happened over the last week was yes. the uh, Meltdown and Spectre uh, exploits, and that sort of came to light, and a lot of people were worried about the security of the processors. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you explain a little bit about how that is uh, impacting AMD and what AMD is doing? Sure. Well, the, the uh, exploit that came up is uh, leveraging a, a way that really all modern processors use to get more performance. The technical term is speculative execution. And it affects, again, any uh, modern microprocessor in a high performance region. So uh, AMD worked with the industry uh, as we became aware of this last year. It was a concerted effort uh, to make sure that we understood the exploits uh, and all of us uh, uh, where we could collectively or obviously uh, it affects every uh, chip uh, implementation differently. So together and individually uh, to uh, attack this threat. Uh, I could describe, uh, it may be uh, uh, helpful for listeners to understand a little bit about these variants. Yeah, go, go right ahead. I think that would okay. be very helpful because I think there's some confusion about right. how they differ. Yeah, because there's been a lot in the press and so you'll hear about these uh, two different types um, you know, uh, Spectra, which has uh, a couple of different variants in it, and, uh, and Meltdown. And so, again, all of us in the industry uh, uh, are basically won't stop until we've eliminated any chance of exploit across any of these variants. And in AMD, uh, we're the same. And we have, uh, uh, because of our, our implementation, uh, the Meltdown was not applicable. But on uh, Spectra, uh, those variants uh, underneath there were in fact applicable. And what we did with the first variant uh, was we worked with uh, the Linux, the Microsoft, the uh, OS uh, operating system developers uh, and to make sure that, uh, that there could be a software patch that frankly eliminated uh, that exploit. And then on the second variant uh, uh, of uh, Spectra, it's quite complex. And so what we've done is we've looked at uh, where uh, there's been learning across academia as well as industry here. And again, uh, what we've done is positioned uh, th uh, through cooperative e e efforts, uh, what you'll be here coming out uh, from us in the, in the next uh, couple days uh, is how whether, uh, in, you know, based on the microarchitecture uh, that you have, the chip that you have from AMD, um, whether you're okay as is or whether you might need a software or microcode uh, download, but again, in all cases, we won't stop, and the industry won't stop, until we ensure any of these type of, uh, of uh, bad actors trying to get it in your data inside a microprocessor are thwarted. So for our you know, readers that have an AMD processor, mm -hmm. what is it that they should be doing right now or looking out for right now to fix the yeah. issue on their system? The biggest thing that I think everyone has to do and think about in computing, you're always seeing a note about, oh, there, there's a new operating system update or a, a, a some type of a software microcode or a BIOS type of update you might need. And oftentimes you're busy and you might sort of ignore that and think, oh, I'll get to that <laughs> down the road. Uh, what, what I would urge uh, folks is pay attention to that uh, because you do want the latest updates. 
the thing about security is it's a constantly evolving landscape. And again, we're all working to make sure that, that we tune the software and microcode on your computers so that they're always up to date. And whatever we learn, we react, we put out protection against it. So that would be my recommendation. Download yeah. those updates. That is good advice. You know, that's something, we get questions about that a lot at Digital Trends. Mm -hmm. uh, some people don't want to update their device because they're afraid it's going to break something. And I understand that, but that's really the only way to get the latest security updates. You exactly. have to update your device. That's right. Now, moving on to new things from AMD. Mm -hmm. um, there was quite a few things announced actually recently. Uh, this before CES. Mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, you announced was the Ryzen for mobile, uh, or more specifically, um, you had Ryzen 3, a more um, entry level component yes. that can go into laptops in a uh, more budget orientation. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about that. What sure. are you getting with Ryzen 3 in terms of both um, the processor and also, of course, the GPU side? Absolutely. Well, uh, starting with the, just uh, for those not as familiar with Ryzen, uh, we've been working at AMD for really the past four years on developing a new state-of-the-art uh, competitive x86 processor that could compete across uh, the full range from uh, entry level to the highest performance. And so we did launch that in uh, desktops uh, in spring of, uh, of 2017, uh, and it's been uh, successful, rolled out across the, the channels and, and desktop. And then uh, we, there is the Ryzen 7, the highest end, the Ryzen 5, and then we did roll out that Ryzen 3. So that completed that lineup uh, right down through, uh, you know, across uh, all the performance levels uh, across a, a desktop. And what was really exciting at the end of the year is we took that Zen core that was in our whole Ryzen lineup and we took the Vega graphics, which we had rolled out in standalone, highest performance, discrete graphics processors, uh, those are, you know, it's, it's uh, Vega's used in, in the uh, iMac with the 5K, mm -hmm. it's used in the highest end uh, uh, type of uh, gaming rigs that people use. We took that same base Vega graphics, merged it with that Zencore and Ryzen, and put those in Ryzen Mobile, launched it at the end of the year. And so what you're seeing is uh, the most powerful ultra-thin laptops uh, coming out with uh, Ryzen Mobile, started in uh, November, HP, uh, followed by uh, Lenovo, uh, Acer, and uh, you'll, you'll see uh, more of these uh, notebooks coming out uh, just in the coming months here. What kind of price points are you hoping that um, your PC manufacturer partners will be able to hit with this Ryzen 3 chip? Well, when you look at just, uh, you know, you can first just go to the uh, e-tail sites and look at uh, purchases of, of uh, components uh, above $100, right? And so it's, it's affordable computing, but high performance computing. And what you see is uh, AMD in, in, uh, in North America rose to 40 to 50% share of these, uh, of these uh, processor components. And we haven't been at that share level on those e-tail sites in years. So uh, it's a big statement of the momentum we're building behind Ryzen. And in fact, the customer satisfaction has been very high. Uh, in fact, uh, if you look at the uh, verified purchases on these e-tail and, and retail sites, uh, we're actually above the competition. So Ryzen's being very well received. It's hitting you know, a, a need for high performance compu computing at more affordable prices. And with the Ryzen 3 mobile, mm -hmm. um, that is not a chip that's going to be able to run everything at max detail or anything like that, but it can run uh, a fair number of games. Can you give yeah. a few examples of like popular titles that you could get on one of these uh, sort of entry level Ryzen 3 systems? Well, that's what's really exciting about it. I mean, you can run, we've taken a, you know, like leading edge uh, games and we've run against it, and this is what we know to do. Because we're a CPU and a GPU company, you know, we've got, you know, hundreds of engineers who are uh, designing that integrated, it's all on one chip. Ryzen Mobile is an integrated CPU and, uh, and, and, and GPU capability all on one chip, very, very efficient. And we can run leading edge game titles up to like 50 frames per second, which is just unheard of on a single, mm -hmm. uh, single chip. So yeah, you, you, you can actually run uh, what's called AAA games, which are, <coughs> excuse me, are the, you know, the top rated uh, games, high performance games. Now, speaking of graphics, there is something else very interesting that's come, mm -hmm. um, come up lately, which is a collaboration you're doing with Intel. Sure. Uh, and uh, there's actually an Intel processor that's going to be uh, I believe it's around the March time frame that's coming out, and it, it, it is joined with uh, Radeon uh, Vega Graphics in order to make a very nice, well-balanced overall package. So I'm sure that a lot of, especially AMD fans, are probably, <laughs> when they hear, hear that announcement, like, 
when they hear about that, they're probably like, whoa, like what is happening? Like what's going on here? So, you know, can you explain like what is AMD getting out of this collaboration with Intel? You're, sure. you know, a company that's been seen as sort of an arch rival in the past. Yeah, well, you know, uh, the very nature of electronics industry, you've heard that phrase, Matt, many times, coopetition. Mm -hmm. Why do you hear that? Because it's the nature of our industry. So we're in CPU and GPUs. We'll sell our CPUs uh, standalone, our GPUs, uh, graphics processors standalone, or we'll put, them, we'll put them together. When our CPUs standalone, we want it to go everywhere, mm -hmm. and that includes uh, with our competitor graphics. Mm -hmm. When we sell our GPUs, we want it to go everywhere, uh, including with our, our competitor's uh, CPUs. So in this instance, it was complimentary. We have a custom business. Uh, you've seen what we've done with uh, game consoles, where uh, it's at the heart of uh, uh, the, the latest Xbox and, and you know the uh, latest PlayStation 4 is actually uh, AMD CPU and graphics, but it's a custom implementation with those customers. Likewise, uh, this was a custom uh, implementation with Intel, so it is, uh, it is uh, our graphics uh, processor uh, tailored to be able to uh, marry uh, with Intel, and it's, it's a, actually a nice compliment. Uh, because, uh, it, uh, it, again, we're, we're already selling into that market. We're going to be selling uh, in segments uh, with, with our competitive uh, uh, CPU. And so this, this makes, uh, in that segment of very high-performance gaming, uh, it, it, it makes for a better use of our Radeon graphics. So it's a good partnership in that segment. And just to distill down a little bit, um, it sounds like, you know, for what you're saying, you're basically, you want Radeon out there because the more Radeon you have out there, um, and wherever it might be, a game console or with an Intel chip or, or what have you, that strengthens, you know, the Radeon brand and makes people want to, you know, program with Radeon in mind, you know, when they're making uh, big name games. Do you think that's a fair assessment? Exactly. I mean, we want, we want Radeon everywhere. Yeah. And, and we're going uh, to run that business to maximize placement. Of course, we want our CPU everywhere, and we're going to drive that business to maximize its placement as well. And there's two versions um, in terms of the graphics mm -hmm. uh, side of it with that Intel with Vega chip. Yes. Uh, one's got uh, 20 compute units, one has 24 compute units. Is that right? There, there's always a range. I mean, our, uh, you know, Intel will talk about the specifics mm -hmm. of uh, the product as they roll it out, uh, but was uh, quite common uh, is uh, to have a you know, different range of uh, graphics, uh, you know, compute options uh, that, that are enabled for different product SKUs. What kind of performance levels are you expecting to see out of the uh, graphics chip on that in terms of like relative to uh, chips we've seen in the past or competitors like the NVIDIA GTX series? So our uh, AMD uh, graphics roadmap, our Radeon uh, roadmap, what's very exciting about what we rolled out in uh, 2017 and the enhancements that we come in in 2018 is we brought uh, AMD Radeon competition against the whole stack. Uh, when we rolled out Vega, that's what brought us head to head in that high performance gaming, that enthusiast gaming sector. So the, uh, going uh, uh, forward into uh, uh, 2018, we're placed very well. So we do compete uh, right up against the, uh, the high end of our competitors' discrete graphics roadmap. And with that um, Vega chip being in there, you, you're going to have access to some of the AMD driver features, is that right? What are some of the um, like special features that come as part of that package? Well, if you look at uh, what uh, AMD has, uh, has done, in fact, we just rolled out our, our adrenaline driver stack. Yeah. And uh, what we do really at every generation of our uh, driver stack is uh, we're trying to enable our users to have more control. Because folks are really into graphics, they want to be able to tailor the best experience. If they have a, a display that supports uh, FreeSync. FreeSync is our ability to really match that frame rate coming out of our graphics processor right to the display, to have it you know, automatically tuned. We, we, we support FreeSync and now FreeSync 2, the latest advances of this uh, display to graphics processor technology. And we have the whole uh, you know, relive experience where if you're playing games and you want uh, to be able to capture uh, your gaming experience, we can do that. And in fact, we added an app where you can interface uh, you know, through your uh, mobile device and be monitoring, the, you know, folks are, the, the, you know, if you're a gamer, you want to know what's my frame rate when I'm, when I'm cranking at the most intense scene. You know, we have that kind of data and interaction available through a, a mobile device app as well. These are several of the features that are rolled out in our latest uh, Adrenaline release. Personal favorite of mine is the uh, Wattman, mm -hmm. um, which is a sort of 
overclocking utility yep. lets you make a lot of adjustments to your frequencies and clock speeds on the card very on or GPU wherever it may be very easily. Mm -hmm. So that's that's definitely a great one. Now Matt, our engineers are, that uh, are going to hear you say that are going to feel very proud. They work oh, yeah, like incredibly it's, hard it's, uh, to enable that capability. Anything you can do to make that sort of thing more accessible, I think, just increases your pool of people who are enthusiastic yes. about the hardware. And that, of course, is good for AMD, but it's also good for just people who you know, are PC nerds like me. So um, now let's talk about uh, one more thing here that's a little bit more forward-looking. Mm -hmm. um, it was something that was announced uh, at your pre-CS uh, event, and mm -hmm. it was the, uh, I believe it's called uh, Vega Instinct? Um, it's, v it's Vega Radeon machine, Instinct. Yeah, your machine mm -hmm. learning initiative. Yes. And that's, that's something that's new um, and very cool, not only because of the machine learning initiative, but also because you've got some pretty advanced sort of production technology going on we do. behind the scenes there. So talk a little bit about that. Sure. Well, it, it turns out that, uh, of course, uh, you, you know you know of uh, Radeon, our, our graphics processing for the great visualization we have. But when you look at machine learning, uh, the type of mathematics it's running uses those same type of engines that use to rasterize, to you know, to run the graphics. It's a parallel processing. So the, the, those engines in a discrete graphics are uh, very, very well tuned for machine learning. And what we've announced that we'll be shipping actually sampling uh, later in 2017, in 2018, sorry, <laughs> is uh, a, a graphics chip of uh, Radeon Instinct, mm -hmm. that is our machine learning uh, line, that's optimized for machine learning. So we added special math mathematical uh, uh, support for deep learning ops, it makes it more efficient uh, in, in uh, running uh, you know, those ma uh, machine learning algorithms. And then on the other end, for the toughest uh, workstation and server uh, compute operations, we have what's called double precision. So we have a, a, a wide range of, of a mathematical support from uh, you know, these most difficult double precision down to these deep learning ops. So it's a wide ranging mathematical powerhouse that we'll be bringing into market. And you mentioned technology, it'll be using the latest seven nanometer. That's the, uh, the newest uh, semiconductor technology node, uh, which will be coming to advent in the, in the next year. Yeah, the, um, let's talk about that seven nanometer sure. um, node a little bit, because this isn't the only product that you'll be planning to roll out on that uh, over the next uh, couple years, I believe. Um, now, I'm sure that there's a lot of viewers that might you know, hear that and not really know what that means. So what, okay. is, what is the advantage, like, first of all, like, what is this node? And then second of all, what is the advantage of having a, um, a smaller one? Sure. Yeah, if you're not steeped in, in this, it's just, a, it's, it, it, it sounds like a, a bunch of, uh, of uh, weird uh, technical deep phrases we're using here. But think about it very simply is, um, when, you, when you take uh, microprocessors from generation to generation, it takes multiple factors to improve its performance, to get more done in the same amount of power and the same cost. And uh, what, it, uh, what happens is, uh, is you, can, you have to add new design te techniques every generation, but you also want the very semiconductor you're building on to advance over generations to allow you to shrink, to allow you to put mm -hmm. more, processing power, more processing capability at less power. So uh, we're using today a, a, you know, a type of transistor called a FinFET. Uh, it's in the uh, 14 and 16 nanometers, so that's, the, that's just the dimension size when you print and you, you know, manufacture these wafers. And so you think about it, you're cutting that uh, almost in half in the feature size as you go to that next node. So that's considerable shrinkage, allowing you to get more CPU and graphics in, uh, horsepower in that same envelope of power. Yeah, I, I think it's very exciting uh, specifically because there was a time five years ago, let's say, that uh, Intel was having a pretty substantial lead in this True. regard. And um, now we are starting to see that's changing a bit. Uh, AMD and uh, some others as well are being a lot more competitive. I think that's really helping the overall processor landscape to have a lot more competitive options for whoever wants to build a system at home. Yeah. Well, look, you know, at AMD, it, we're very excited about what I call, in, in general, the return of competition uh, back across a high performance. But, you know, we, we, with, uh, with that Zen Core, we brought a high performance uh, x competition back across the PC space and in the server. 
Uh, with uh, Vega, as I mentioned, we brought high performance uh, competition uh, back all the way through uh, high performance uh, graphics processing. And that leveling of the playing field that you talk about in semiconductor nodes is a huge deal because um, if everybody can get at the same kind of range of, a, of a competitive semiconductor process, that allows us all to compete on the, on the merit of our designs. Awesome. Well, Mark, this has been live broadcasted the entire uh, time, and a lot of people weighing in on this. Sure. Robert McLeod, big fan, saying I've been using AMD since AMD was a word, which Thank I thought was really cool. Thank and you. Uh, Brees has said my new system is definitely going to be a Ryzen 7 with Jordan chiming in saying, yep. So big fans in the chat there. We are live broadcasting from CES 2018 all day, not only today, but tomorrow. And yesterday, you can catch up on all of that content at digitaltrends.com forward slash CES. We have more content still to come as well, so make sure you stick around.